Out of every new character created for the second Jurassic Park film, the one that undoubtedly stands out the most is Roland Timbo. After being played excellently by Pete Postlewaite, this truly enjoyable anti-hero takes charge of Ludlow's dinosaur extraction party and earns his place as one of the most memorable characters of the franchise. Many fans have actually cited Roland as being one of their favorite characters in the franchise, and if you've seen the second film, it's not really that difficult to understand why. He's just got something about him that feels realistic and honest, and his no-bullshit attitude complements these traits in an entry that easily places itself as the darkest movie in the series. Roland offers something to the audience that Alan Grant and Ian Malcolm quite simply never could, and his role in The Lost World is deservedly so appreciated by many who like, or even dislike, that film. Now, the man's highest accomplishment in said film was the tranquilizing of the bull tyrannosaur that attacked the hunter's camp towards the end of the second act in the movie. He, of course, was forced to do this after Nick Van Owen pulled the bullets out of his rifle and emptied the shells. Many have often wondered what would have happened in that scene if Van Owen hadn't gotten to the Kenyan's gun earlier, and if Roland's cartridges had not been tampered with, could he actually have taken down a T-Rex like he'd planned? To answer this question, we needn't look any further than the hunter's gun. Roland carried with him a double-barreled rifle made by Butch Searcy, a well-regarded California gunmaker that specializes in higher-end hunting rifles. The ammo he'd chosen for this hunt was the 600 Nitro Express. These large-bore rifle cartridges popularized by African hunters in the early 1900s were the most powerful cartridges available in the world until the 700 Nitro Express was introduced in 1988. The term Express was used to publicize the bullet velocity of James Purdy's rifles back in 1856, and the word Nitro stems from the propellant used in the cartridges, cordite, which is composed of both nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin. To make a point of how powerful this ammo really is, I think a great point of conversation would be of its usage in World War I. Way back in 1914 and 15, German soldiers were sniping British forces from behind steel plates that were impervious to the normal ball ammunition the British used. Their counter to this attack was the purchasing of 62 large bore hunting rifles, including four 600 Nitro Express rifles for the soldiers to carry. They actually used these guns and their ammo to shoot through the steel plates of their enemies and win the day. The force of this weapon is truly astonishing, especially back in the First World War. One of the King's own Yorkshire Light infantrymen is actually quoted with stating that the first man that fired one of the guns from a prone position broke his collarbone from the recoil. Roland, being the experienced African hunter that he is, would ultimately choose this firearm to be his weapon of choice in going after a male Tyrannosaurus on the expedition to Isla Sorna. His selected game, however, was very different than anything he'd ever killed before. The Tyrannosaur pair in The Lost World are shown to be both around 7 tons and nearly 20 feet tall. The male Timbo chose to go after had deep scarring around its face, telling us that it was no stranger to trouble on the island even before the humans returned. The Rex also had a skull that was several centimeters thick, which may have been a design of resilience while delivering or receiving bites from other Tyrannosaurs. In the film, we see one rip the roof off of Eddie Carr's Mercedes-Benz, and we also see the leftover damage caused when it broke out of its holding cage once the SS Venture is shown to collide into the San Diego dock. Rollins would be going up against his most worthy opponent yet, and the Rex would be facing the same. After the male Rex surprised the engine hunters that fateful night in 1997, Roland's hunting partner and gun bearer, Ajay Sidhu, is pulled away by the other mercenaries while they desperately run for safety from the dinosaur. Roland runs towards the attack and is met with the arrival of the female, who's just burst through the foliage on his left side. Raising his rifle to this dinosaur's brain and firing off a shot would have proven a devastating blow to the doe tyrannosaur, and it would indeed have been knocked back. One shot from the 600 Nitro Express is said to have enough power to knock an elephant out for up to a half hour, and while a Tyrannosaurus Rex is considerably more threatening than any modern African game, this animal would still have been dealt a serious injury and more than likely death from such a cartridge. And even if it hadn't have died immediately, Roland's double gives the hunter the ability to follow up this first shot with another and after the Rex had been knocked to the ground, finishing off the job would be relatively easy. The biggest issue Roland would face in taking on the Tyrannosaurs like this would be the lack of more cartridges to load his gun with. After the initial Tyrannosaur attack, all of the hunters are shown to have scattered and left Roland to do battle with the Rexes alone, and pulling Ajay away from his side is long speculated to have been a horrible loss in Roland's arsenal. Being the Kenyan's partner, it's pretty noticeable that Ajay wouldn't have been much help with the Winchester Model 70 that he was carrying. Sure, it's a gun and anything is better than nothing, but one questions its reliability against a pair of full-grown Tyrannosaurs, especially after one of the hunters has shown firing an AKMS variant at the female to no real effect right before Carter is stepped on and killed. 
Ajay is more than likely the bearer of Roland's backup cartridges that he would desperately need to finish the other wrecks off, and it's highly theorized that the man kept these within his pack, which was discarded in the don't go into the long grass scene. The reason this theory holds up so well is the simple fact that Nitro Express cartridges are notoriously heavier than normal ammo, with rifles chambering the cartridge usually weighing in at 16 pounds. While that doesn't sound like much, it's widely accepted for a gun bearer to carry the extra ammo, so that any excess weight wouldn't impede the hunter of moving as quick as he'd need to. And you may need to stay a bit spry and on your feet when you're going up against a Tyrannosaurus Rex, let alone two of them. Roland would probably have run into a very bad situation had his second shot not been used on the male Rex that stood directly behind the doe, and if he had exhausted what ammo he had available before both dinosaurs were downed, he may not have made it out of the Lost World alive at all. In conclusion, Roland Timbo was more than prepared to take on the buck Tyrannosaur that he set out to find, and would probably have taken home a trophy if everything went in his favor on that island. But once Ajay and the other hunters fled from the campsite, his chances of survival quickly diminished. And while it's still likely that this Mombasan would have made one of the Rexes fall, killing the first Rex could have proven to be the biggest mistake he'd ever made. The way this situation's events play out in the film is extremely fun to watch, and it's one of my personal favorite moments in the series. Seeing Timbo open up the tranquilizing darts that the team had brought to subdue the animals and use them against his target prey is incredibly suspenseful, and John Williams' score flares up at the perfect moment to really give us the sense of danger this man has found himself in. Every second of this scene is filmmaking genius, from the terrified mercenaries shoving Malcolm to the ground while they're trying to run, to the POV shot of the buck looking down at Pete Postlewaite once the first dart is hit. It's incredibly well made. Sure, it would have been slightly more realistic if the primers would still make their snap instead of the empty click that we hear in the movie, but firearm believability is seldom seen in any Hollywood film, and I can't ignore all of this other badass stuff happening within this scene. Guys, I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope that you all enjoyed today's content. If you truly think that I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if this video piqued your interest in hearing from me again. I'll see all you guys in the next video, and as always, take it easy.